What is up guys, Levi Peterson here back at it with another video. As you can tell, uh, my room's a little messy right now because we've got a new thing that's happening. Um, the 25 extra high, the rare tank is officially done. Now, I was actually planning on doing pipe fishing here with lots of macroalgae and all that kind of stuff. But um, I decided to go with a little smaller tank simply because uh, I have just there's a lot of water up here to deal with and stuff and I just want to go with a little smaller tank I got a really nice light that's gonna help me grow some corals on it Got a really nice deal on that so I'm gonna use this or that light and kind of prop it up on here somehow or hang it and then we're gonna have have just a simple decent sized hang on the back filter which is sitting right there right now on the brackish tank that's gonna go on the back of here um, then I really won't need a power hook because I'm gonna have a nice filter that can I can control the flow on the filter and everything so that'll be really nice and eventually I might get a super small light above this guy right here to kind of turn it into almost a small sump. Like simply adding in some little tiny pieces of mackerel I'll do or just a nice clump in there to help with the phosphates and everything in the reef tank. Or you can simply, there's actually lots of different kinds of mackerel algae out there. I don't know if you guys really know that. Um, red bamboo algae can actually act as a salt coral. So I might actually add some red bamboo algae in here to help with the phosphates and everything. Um, it's really just kind of what you want to do um, with your tank. Um, I'm going to try to go with the easiest way possible to do the smaller tanks, which will be having a little bit of macroalgae in there. And we have a little friend that's visiting in on the video today. Nice sized tree frog sitting out at the door, or window, my bad. Um, so I'll probably just do some soft corals in here for starting off. Maybe add a couple different kinds of zoas. Um, this light will grow the soft corals like man. Excuse me. Uh, and then possibly maybe a small clump of hammer coral. I'm not sure what kind yet. Um, really, they're not that expensive. $15 a head for a small uh, hammer coral. So that, I might try that out under this light and see how that does. And if that doesn't do so well, then I won't do that again. Um, definitely no anemones in this tank. I'm just not going to mess with anemones. Um, there probably is going to end up some in there that hitchhike and everything. So I really just don't want to mess with anemones. Fish-wise, I'm not planning on putting hardly anything in there. Maybe two to three fish at the max. Because you don't want to overdo the tank. You just want to get the tank going and everything. This thing is going to be cycling for probably about four to five weeks, 45 days. It really depends on the tank and how fast it cycles. Using simple live rock and dirty filters and everything could help that process. Kind of give it a little bit of a boost in the start there. Um, other than that, and like I said, really, you'll just test your tank and everything, and once your parameters even out, then you're ready for fish. You usually try a really cheap fish, like a damsel fish, which are like $5 at the store. Very cheap and everything, just a good starter fish, or mollies. A lot of people are actually doing mollies, because they're even cheaper than a damsel fish. Is. Add those in your tank to make sure the tank's fully ready for fish and everything, and then you can kind of take them out or leave them in there if you like them. Just got to be careful, because damsels can be very, very aggressive towards other fish. Um, and then you can scoop them out if you want to and add in the fish that you're planning on doing. And I'd recommend for a 10 gallon, maybe adding one fish a week or every other week. Because you don't want to add too many fish at once because it'll just boom, bacterial bloom, and your tank's going to be really in trouble. Um, I do have a super, super, super small protein skimmer that I'm going to put on this to kind of help me out um, with the coral keeping and everything. So that'll cause a little bit less maintenance but not too much I will probably do a water change every other week um, I need to do most of my water changes on Mondays that tank hasn't gotten more than two weeks that guy's due and so is frogfish tank over there that guy's due um, so I gotta get some premix salt water for that guy I do mix my own salt water here but I like to get it from the store just to be exactly precise because I really just don't want to kill all the fish in there because I got a decently expensive frog fish in there that I don't want to mess with so I'm kind of running through the quick stuff of actually setting up a 10 gallon. Uh, the first thing I did is simply add a pool sand, which is very cheap, and that can easily, uh, that's totally fine for a saltwater tank. A lot of people are like, I need a rag and I, I need the live sand. Live sand is a joke unless you get it like exact, like straight from the ocean. Because if you really think about it, live sand has bacteria in it. They scoop out of the oceans, put it in bags, and it sits in a warehouse for years, if not like a few months, and all that bacteria dies and you get that bag and you open it up and it just stinks and that's because all the bacteria in that bag is dead same with the manufacturers that send out live bacteria in bottles at stores to like instantly start your tank that's not true unless you get it directly from a supplier that has given you previously packaged 
live bacteria. So you got to be careful with that. Don't trust those kind of things unless you know exactly what you're dealing with. Um, I had thought about trying to do that with this tank, but I'm just not going to mess with it. Let it cycle natural and everything. And let it do its thing. Um, if you let it do its thing, it really, 45 days or 30 days will go by faster than you think. And like I said, some tanks take less, some tanks take, take more days to cycle than other tanks. So heck, this could take like maybe two and a half weeks. But like I said, you've got to constantly test it if you want to figure out when it's time to add fish, which is when all your parameters are all equally established and they're balanced. So like I said, you still got to be careful, um, especially with the smaller tanks because you don't have as many room to work with. One problem with a 10 gallon nano tank like this, you have to make sure the salt is precise every time you do a water change. Same with that 30 hex over there. Simply because if you have a little cup too, too much salt in there, everything's dead. All the fish, all the coral, everything, all the invertebrates, it's just gone. Because you had way too much salt and like I said, it's better just to buy pre-mix. And if you mix it yourself, be sure it's exactly at 1.025 or 1.026, whatever you keep around. Um, other than that, I'm going to kind of... I'm going to add a little bit of water. I'm going to kind of do a montage of me adding water and possibly a little more sand. I'm going to fill it up halfway. And then next time I head into my store, I'm going to add a couple pieces of live rock and dry rock into this tank to get it going. And we'll get the filter on and get the light on somehow. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that. I'll probably hang it or just prop it up um, with some wood or something. We'll figure something out. So let's go ahead and get to the montage and get to me starting to fill this tank up halfway. So this video will actually not be finished today. I'm going to actually have a part two of me finishing the scape and everything and getting it going. Um, if you have any questions about how to set up, sorry about that. If you have any questions about how to set up a smaller tank, like a nano tank, um, like simply this, not, it's not even reef ready or anything. A lot, like a lot of people actually go with the tanks that actually are pre, whew, excuse me, that are preset. They have a little sump filtration thing in the back of it. They're like the aqua tops, the coral life. Uh, bio cubes and everything those are very very nice and convenient um, and they like I said they will help out a lot in the long run with coral and just about anything fish etc um, so I'm kind of taking a little bit different approach than most people by just doing a standard 10 gallon um, hopefully it ends well for me I'm gonna try my best to do as best as I can keep up with the water changes cannot slack on the water changes on a smaller tank like this that's really gonna wrap it up for this video I don't want to keep you guys too long there will be a part two coming out in the next video so be prepared for that we'll be adding the live rock and just about everything possibly a little bit of macroalgae or maybe mangrove plant still trying to actually figure that out myself exactly what i'm going to do um and also kind of getting a planning list together on what i'm actually going to put in there um that's definitely not going to be complete because i really have no clue what i'm going to do definitely some zoas and maybe some small waving hand polyp colonies to kind of grow out in there just some easier stuff to start out with and maybe get into some hammers later on other than that don't forget to be the fish and we'll see you next time.